The next gentleman is a talented, fast-rising, undefeated heavyweight prospect looking to be the first father and son who both have won the heavyweight championship belt. He will have the honor of introducing and inducting the man who scored an upset victory against Lennox Lewis for the unified WBC, IBF, IBO, and lineal titles in 2001 and the WBC in 2005, 2006. Carrying those iron, fi iron fists just like his father, Hasim Rahman, please help me welcome Hasim Gold Blooded Rahman Jr. Rahman. <laughs> Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Big on cold, y'all. They say the baddest man on the planet is the heavyweight champion of the world. Jack Johnson, Sonny Liston, Joe Louis, Muhammad Ali, Larry Holmes, Mike Tyson, Lenny Lewis, Evander Holyfield, Deontay Wilder, just to name a few of the baddest. But what separates our next inductee from the rest of these champions is that he wasn't prepared for the hunt of a world title like the rest of the names were. This man started from the ground up, not walking into a boxing gym until he was 20 years old. And with only 10 amateur fights, he took his name, his family, and his city to the top of not only the boxing world, but to the top of the sports world and all. No experience, no guidance, coming out of the murder capital, this guy had no chance in the boxing world of Olympians and veterans of the same craft. They said it was impossible. He did this for me, my siblings, and his family. He never put himself ahead of us. Every victory was we. If you ask me if he did an amazing job, of course I gotta say yes. I've seen things only people could dream of in this life. As this child, I stand here and I tell you that I remember, I remember the long runs you put in, I remember the hard punches you took and always returned fire. I remember the crazy workouts you did. I remember when they played with your money, you had to go get it, go. I remember when my mom pulled in the driveway at Hillsdale and told me we was fighting Lennox next. I remember that as soon as he hit that canvas, I knew that it was a mark on us, we was a target. I knew that our lives had changed forever. I remember going to Mecca and Medina after you won a title and realizing, wow, my dad's just not my hero. He's just not Baltimore's hero. He's a hero for the entire world, for all the people. Everywhere we go my entire life, people respect you and love you for what you've done in this sport, for the sacrifice you made, the work you put in, and countless amount of men you removed from their consciousness. From the bottom of my heart, I want to say thank you, Dad, for everything. Your legacy, your legacy will carry on to me and my brothers, Your legacy will carry on to me and my brothers, and all the great heavyweight champions that came before you, there's never been one to raise the heavyweight champion of his home. They say it's impossible. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> I ask y'all to put your hands together, because I always wanted to do this. Champions. I'm just honored to be here among so many great champions. Um, I don't believe in writing speeches. So I'm going to just piggyback off of what he said. So 
talking about the baddest man on the planet. I thought I was the baddest man on the planet at 17, 18 years old. I had 85, $90,000, a couple cars, guns, money, everything I wanted, girls. I thought I was the man. I was, I was obviously doing illegal things, uh, but I thought that was the way. I was, I was, I was looking for the easy way out. And uh, ironically enough, the little fella right there who just introduced me was the, was the one who got me into boxing because uh, I knew I had a short shelf life in the drug game. So I changed my life. He, he's, the, he's the reason I got into boxing. Well, he changed it all for me. So every title I won, I got to I got to say thank you to him. Thank you, sir. So um, I mean, it was it was it was because of him because I didn't want the, I don't want the state or the feds to take me away from him. If I had a nice 10, 11 year run, then I just left him alone. So I got into boxing. Then I realized, okay, now I'm a man. When I, when I got hit in the mouth, when I got punished in the, in, the, in the gym every day and just had to come back and try to get it back. Now I, I realized oh, this, this is what being a man is about. Going to get some fast money, making more money than my father and my mother. You know, that wasn't, that wasn't cute. You know, uh, I had to do it the right way. I had to dig down and really work for it. And that was that was my real nine to five boxing. That was my life. So um, I just I just like to thank everybody here for being boxing fans. You know, boxing matters. It's gonna always matter. And uh, I like to thank you know my team. I got a super super team. I like to thank Greg Haney, Greg Cohen, Paul. Uh, but Jackie, I'd like to thank um, Sophia, I'd like to thank John Casey, well, let me call him Dad, let me just not call him John Casey, let me call him Dad. Um, I'd like to thank, you know, my son, my children, I got eight beautiful children, and I'd like to thank um, the CEO of, of my existence, and Stephanie. So, I appreciate y'all. Oh, I almost forgot my sister. She was just up here, y'all heard her speak real eloquently. Michelle Corrales, that's my sister. And like she said, we not, you know, DNA sisters, but we, we blood like that, for real. So, that's my sister. And I'd like to thank all my family for coming out. I appreciate y'all. I'm honored to be amongst all these Hall of Famers. And these are real Hall of Famers. I mean, everybody on this list, I used to be a fan of. So I appreciate y'all. Good luck. God bless. Let's do it right now, ladies and gentlemen.